first, I want to thank everyone um, for coming. And then I also want to make a specific thank you to the great organization of STA and this conference, especially the Educator Forum over the years has provided a lot of inspiration. Thanks for Sharon and Guy and JP, <laughs> who at the last minute saved the presentation here. So um, my name is Jan Ballard. Um, as Guy said, I am a, a, a teacher at Texas Christian University, and I've been teaching there for over 30 years. Um, this presentation is a case study um, that I've been uh, assigning my students for the last four semesters. And I want to talk a little bit about the university self. Uh, you may recognize TCU, especially you here in Oregon, uh, that we are known for football because uh, it's Texas. Um, but we're also known as Texas Construction University because the university with its $1.4 billion endowment is redoing their entire campus system. So there's always new construction going on. The class that I am teaching, I teach four classes. One of my classes that I have been assigned to teach is a senior level class. This is our BFA degree program. And they take two classes their last semester with us. One is their senior thesis, but the other one's called portfolio and marketing. And this class gets together, I analyze their portfolio, where it's weak, where they need to maybe brush up a little bit, um, bring their pieces up to a more of a full campaign. Um, and then they present their work in a gallery setting uh, to earn their BFA degree. Um, we have two different degree plans. We have a BFA and a BA of design studies. But only BFAs do the last two classes, their capstone classes. Part of this class that I inherited was to do a logo board for their gallery. So they produce all of their work in a gallery setting. They also do their online portfolio. And the logo board, pretty much we pick out all of their logo types, their iconography, um, from where they've uh, taken all of their classes of three years, and create this board that goes in the gallery. This is about a 40 inch by 30 inch board. Uh, and then we also produce a logo book, and I model it after the pentagram, little small books that have an application of the logo with the, the logo itself. But when I inherited this uh, class, what I found were that the assignment that I was given was that the students are going to create four new logos. And so they come up with the brief. And of course, you can imagine what they actually do is they want to create craft breweries. And since I'm in Portland, there's nothing wrong with craft breweries, but we don't need more logos of them in a student portfolio. Or an ATM cupcake sprinkles type of thing, or um, a yoga, yoga uh, studio, or anything else that they're more familiar with. So I wanted to kind of challenge my students, and I told them that one of the logos I wanted to to do something that was not what they would normally do, what they would do. And so to create a branding board for their gallery show. So here's the demographic of my students. Um, you can see that my demographic, I will tell you that the chancellor raises the tuition every year and the tuition itself at TCU is $53,000 a year. It does not include room and board. So these are pretty affluent kids. Um, a third of my students are from Texas, a third are from California, and the other third are from the I-35 corridor, I would say Kansas, Missouri, up to Chicago. Um, and there are suburban kids, and they're very well off. So what I did is I challenged them, and I was inspired by these two um, books by the city of Fort Worth. One are the development standards um, proposed by the south side of uh, Fort Worth, and the other are the urban villages. So the city of Fort Worth has designated about a dozen areas in the city that need redevelopment. Um, so one is pretty close to the university, and it has been for many years an area that the students do not go to. Um, even though it's literally adjacent to the university, they're not interested in patronizing these businesses. So this area is called Berry Street, or as the students like to call it, Scary Berry. Um, and you can see in the upper left-hand corner is the campus. And then along Berry Street, it goes to the, the right, and in the upper right is an urban high school that my daughter actually went to, and it's, I'd say, 90% Hispanic. Um, so this is the grand plan that the university has kind of approved in combination with the city to redevelop this area. 
This area is filled with one-story um, strip centers or individual businesses. Um, for particular uh, notice here are the pink buildings. The pink buildings are going to be three to four story mixed use development. So we'll have um, retail on the bottom and then it will have living quarters above it. Um, and so it, across from that high school, you see a concentration of these pink buildings that are planned. Right now, these pink buildings are one story areas of little businesses, maybe title owned businesses or Hispanic oriented businesses or fast food joints. So I told my students that they must pick a business somewhere in the Berry Street corridor that is not a title loan and not a fast food business. And to imagine if they were the target market, which they are, to these businesses, how would they pick this business to be rebranded so they would be invited into the retail of these new high story buildings. And so I knew that a lot of my students were from suburban areas and we've all been in some of the redevelopment areas in many cities. Um, it, it seems like it would be an ethnically diverse thing to do to invite some of these businesses that exist back into the retail business uh, environment so that we don't have more uh, let's see, West Elm, um, Lululemon, um, Victoria's Secret, more of the same thing that we see in every redevelopment. Uh, in those two documents, these two spreads or three spreads were particularly important to me because the typography is seen not just in a social media environment, which the students are used to, um, but in the physical environment. So to get the students to actually drive down the street and look at the businesses that they drive by all the time. So the, the documents that I gave them have hundreds and hundreds of pages of uh, how to redevelop in terms of the streetscape itself. But most importantly for me was to pick a retail business that they could apply a typographic logo in a village environment. So I was hoping to come up with something like this. So on the left-hand side, you have a logo or logo type. Um, you have the typography for the brand, the color. And then you see in the upper part, you see a black and white photo. This is the, the before picture. And then they can do a schematic of what the after picture might look like and then push out the brand to whatever deliverables. Here it's a Chinese food um, place. So using their mock-ups, what else they might think the brand would talk to them. I mean, they're upper income um, students. What would make them actually go to this business and stop and go inside? So for instance, this is the, um, the Google image of the Bowl Express. You can see that the Chinese food um, uh, awning doesn't even have the words of the place. I found out that the students would actually order from Favor or Uber Eats, but would not ever go in here. Now, me being not a millennial, I actually looked on Yelp and it doesn't have really good reviews. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go for the food, but the students would order from here, but not go inside. So here's a little bit about what the student did. This student is from Kansas City, um, and she's a very wealthy student. This is what she would want this business to be branded as and some of the deliverables. Uh, this building in particular, I was one of the ones that I was most excited about. I was hoping the students would pick it. It is a taqueria, and it's right next to the railroad tracks, but it has this huge side of the building that's just ripe for a mural. And I was hoping that students would pick this. You can see on the right-hand side some of the, the city's um, development with the new street lamps and things. So the street itself has been redeveloped in hopes of getting uh, businesses to redevelop. So this is another student from Kansas. And this is her take on what she'd like to see for this business. So it uses the same um, words, but now she's going in a different direction and how it might expand into the idea of photography, because she had a, a very strong photography um, implement in a lot of her work, and in the advertising and promotional phase. And here's her Instagrammable um, idea for what she'd like to see in terms of on that side facing, and some color blocking on the front. Uh, the next year, I had another student. This student was from Denver. 
Um, and she was actually, on um, this building, more interested in the front side of it. So this actually faces the street. You can see the retro 1970s kind of bubble windows. Um, and she wanted to brand more the front side of the business. So here she has created a hand script and combined it with some typography, colors, and then she went into more of an illustrative kind of design elements that she would use. And she wanted to color block the business um, and use that same color blocking for the, the branding itself and how she might use the logo with the graphics. So two different students, two different parts of the United States, this is what they would like to see. Uh, this is actually um, one of the students that is actually from Fort Worth, um, and she was a, she's a minister's daughter. Um, like Lauren, we have a, a Christian base to our, our university, so um, she decided she wanted to rebrand. It looks like an old Pizza Hut, and it's a karaoke bar, which her dad would have never allowed her into because it serves alcohol. So she came up with a mark, a series of marks, and a color scheme. And then this is her brand, again, ex extended into the promotional Instagram feed for a girl who's never drank in her life. She has kind of a fun atmosphere for the karaoke. So it really, it, it really expands the kids' portfolios, too, because they're, they're having to deal with almost a real business, but imagine um, what the deliverables might be. And this is how she might color brand it. Uh, this is a business that's in a strip center. Um, it's Cafe Bella. And here, it's actually one of my favorite places to go because I can bring my own bottle of wine. And my student from California branded it this way, kind of uh, channeling her inner Louise Feely in terms of the flourishes and the shapes. And she's imagining it, again, in the environment of the urban village with a hanging sign. This is a great building. This is just closer to the freeway. This is actually a vacant theater. I mean, this is ripe for redevelopment. And up until the 1980s, it screened uh, Spanish language movies. There's really nothing around it right now. So a young man from Kansas City, this is how he kind of saw it. Kind of some retro typography, um, some, some color uh, reminiscent of the era. And as you can start to see a trend, more alcohol and more serving um, some beer near the university. So he imagined it kind of like in Austin, they have the Alamo Draft House where it would be uh, a bar and serve movies. And kind of his, his kind of mock up of what, how he saw the color on the outside. Uh, this last semester, I let one of my students actually rebrand uh, a national chain because she was working at the Richards Group and she wanted to propose this. And in light of recent events, it's even more funny now. Um, so uh, Papa John's, he had his face plastered everywhere. Again, I learned that the kids would not go into this to pick up pizza. They would only have it delivered. So she wanted to use a signature and more retro um, photos, kind of sepia photos of him himself, and how she might do the packaging and then also a social media application, and then also a, a merger with Netflix. And how the buff looking guy, I should tell you, most of my students are young women, you'll see buff looking guys with logos on it and their identities. This one kind of broke my heart. Mama's Pizza is a local chain. It is really good pizza. It has been near campus for a long time. And I had a girl from Kansas who would not go into this because it was too sketchy looking. And actually, it's worse inside because it's 1970s paneling and taxidermy and stuff. But it's got a great lunch buffet. But you know, here she's doing some you know, pizza colors. That's a great pattern for pizza and the pizza box. It looks more fun and youthful. It could use some updating. But I almost cried when I thought, saw her, her uh, outdoor uh, imagery of the environmental graphics in the upper right. This actually, to me, looks like cardboard pizza. I, this, as someone who loved those, the pizza, I would not go into this pizza shop. 
Um, this one was another one that kind of broke my heart. So this is actually a small group of stores right next to campus. So Record Town was literally LPs and you know an old record store. And it could not keep up with the rent anymore and it just recently moved. So one of my students wanted to rebrand Record Town to be uh, more updated that it would be spinning vinyl records, but it would also be a coffee shop. So this is a pretty nice logo. And then she actually got rid of the neon sign and we had a big argument about it because I showed her DJ Stout's work down for Lucy's Fried Chicken at Pentagram in Austin. I said, if I had a, if I had a neon sign, I would grandfather that in because it can't be moved. But again, you see this great writing. I just vibed at record time, the interior of what my students want it to look like and the cute guy with the logo. Um, this is another student that actually is Hispanic and it was one of our community scholars. And so on um, a circular roundabout near campus, there is a great donut shop called Circles Donuts and it doesn't look very inviting. But this is her branding for this. And I thought she pretty much hit the TCU demographic, the, the wealthy white uh, girl community, um, pretty well here. Definitely. I mean, she's got, she's got the colors down. She's got, you know, this is going to appeal to the girls that she actually goes to school with. Another donut shop. This one is actually right next to the Hispanic High School. Again, great donuts. I went over there just a few weeks before the semester ended, and they have taken down all of the houses behind there. There's just raw land. So this is not going to be long for the world. But my student, the first time I gave this assignment, she found out that they were actually um, a group from uh, a family uh, that sent their money back to their mission at the church back in the Philippines. So she really took more of a tact knowing the, the, uh, the Christian market. But she started writing things like, give us this day our daily donuts. And so I, th I thought this was a nice kind of kitschy kind of take on, on the, the donut shop. Um, a girl from Scottsdale this last semester um, wanted to brand this business. This is again a chain of Cajun fishing uh, restaurants. She didn't want to go in, which again, I'm like, if you go in, it's great food. But it was pretty intimidating, this wall right here. Um, so she finally did go in. She got a, a kind of a badge looking going on the flying fish. Uh, she started doing some custom hand lettering. Beefy guy with a logo on it. Some, uh, some colors that are a little bit more Cajun spices. And then she proposed this blank wall had to have some movement on it. This is kind of the, the epitome of why I did this. Um, this is actually a popsicle homemade popsicle um, uh, stand. It has uh, some bicycles in front. They go to the school and try to sell popsicles afterwards. And so I had a student from um, a neighborhood in Dallas who invited one of her high, uh, high school friends who spoke Spanish to go in there. And I think she did pretty well on this brand in terms of colors and keeping the kind of cartoon quality of the brand. but making it a little bit more appealing so that the university students aren't as intimidated to go in to it. Uh, the next semester, her Hispanic friend from the same high school, um, who's actually from Mexico City, took an interest on this side of the building. Um, from his heritage, he knew that this little girl from Mexico City represents the brand. And he added the bright colors and kind of the ice cream containers. And that's how he would brand the business. A little bit more authentic in his culture, but still colorful. The, the huge business right next to campus that is probably not threatened at all is the liquor store. So a girl from Oklahoma, a surgeon's daughter, decided that it should have like a shot glass and a chess piece. And she was looking to brand maybe the inside of the store with a checkerboard, maybe do a, a partnership with Crown Royal. Another student, again from uh, the Kansas area, branded it this way using the black letter with some monoline type. 
and applying those to just some, um, some mock-ups, a really nice clean look using some existed signage. And I have a student from the Northwest. This is her railhead smokehouse. This is a, t a girl from the, the, that just lived in Texas for two years, and I think she pretty much nailed this. I think the, the old men sitting at the bar would appreciate this upgrade. So I first presented this at um, the National Student Conference in Dallas. Since then, the next day, they announced that the campus um, was going to put a six-story hotel on Berry Street. This is going to dwarf all the rest of the buildings. It will have a rooftop bar. It doesn't have any relationship to the street. It's going to be similar to every other campus building with a TCU buff brick. It's going to have a big purple horn frog on the front. It's going to be across the street currently from this popsicle stand. So if you come to Texas, come have some barbecue, go hang out on the new roof, drink some beer, and perhaps have a popsicle if it still exists. So thank you very much. <laughs>